Hello everyone. So, today is the last uh, lecture on our series of um, sustainability tools and approaches and today we will be discussing about the concept of carbon footprint. So, we will not only discuss only car carbon footprint, but we will discuss about some of these concepts that is present on this slide. So, carbon credits, carbon footprint, carbon trading, clean development mechanism, carbon trade exchange and carbon neutral. You might have come across all these terminologies and uh, this lecture tries to explain what these terminologies means. So, if you have booked air ticket through indigo, you might have seen this green box. So, just before you are about to make a payment, it asks you clear the air, contribute rupees 100 to fund low carbon initiatives. So, what does this imply? So, whenever you take a journey using an aircraft, because of your journey, because of the aircraft, you are releasing certain kind of gases in the atmosphere, you are causing certain kind of damaging effect efforts on the environment. So, many airlines have come up with this concept that you can contribute certain amount which is a compensatory amount and that amount will be used for doing for funding certain low carbon initiatives. So, if we go into the press release released by indigo in this context. So, indigo says that indigo goes green commits to low carbon rural development program. So, in India it is uh, uh, it claims to be the first airline to partner with fair climate network for low carbon rural development. So, this entire concepts that we are going to discuss today about carbon credits, carbon footprint, carbon trading, clean development mechanism, carbon trade exchange and carbon neutral, they are all about offsetting the damaging effects done by uh, certain agencies or by certain individuals. So, as per the Kyoto protocol, one so the Kyoto protocol decided that let us have a mechanism in which we can prevent the developing countries or rather say we can help the developing countries to come up with green solutions or say low carbon solutions and these activities can be funded by developed countries whenever they want to um, offset the carbon which is being produced because of their activities. This is again a concept which is based on life cycle assessment. So, what is indigo trying to do in with this 100 rupees that it asks you to contribute in case you want to um, do away with the carbon footprint. Of course, that is a 100 rupees for everybody, it does not differentiate whether you are traveling 500 kilometers or whether you are going to travel 2000 kilometers. So, in order to be able to offset the environmental damages caused because of me flying, I can contribute this 100 rupees which indigo will use to bring wind powered electricity to certain rural areas. So, because of this wind power electric generation which will happen in these rural areas, there will be some kind of carbon offsetting happening which will be. So, maybe as an airline company they might have calculated that overall when they do it for all their willing customers, they might be able to achieve so much of offset of their pollution per year. LED bulbs reduced 570 million tons of carbon emission in 2017. So, this is uh, from uh, one of the um, these kind of information keeps on coming in newspaper. So, like LED bulbs reduce 570 million tons of carbon emission. How did we calculate them? So, we are going to compare it with say CFL bulbs or incandescent bulbs. So, we compared uh, all the three bulbs say for example and then see that if I have bring in LED because they are more energy efficient, how much energy I could save with respect to that of using an incandescent bulb. So, it is not that LED bulb in itself is a 
very environmental friendly solution. What it implies is with respect to your incandescent bulb, it is a more environmentally friendly solution. How? Because if I had used an incandescent bulb, whereas if I use a LED bulb, I will be or on a global scale uh, on an average in 2017, we could save around 570 million tons of carbon emission. So, this is an amount similar to shutting down 162 coal fired power plants around the world. Why this is possible? Because modern LED bulbs use between 80 to 90 percent less energy than standard light bulbs and so reduce that carbon footprint. Because I will have to spend less on generating that electricity. So, electricity generation, the carbon which would have got emission emitted in the electricity generation is now being prevented. So, that is how this whole reduction in carbon footprint business works. There is a website, it is called the National Ujala Dashboard. So, Ujala is a program by the government of India under which the discoms and certain other companies, they are distributing LED bulbs. So, when you go on to this website, it will show you in real time total LED distributed say this data was picked up on 21st June 2018 as 1718. So, you can see that there are so many LED bulbs which have been distributed by this program which has done energy saved per year is 39201 million kilowatt hour, how much money it has saved how avoid at peak demand how much then how much of carbon dioxide reduction per year has happened. If you go to one of these particular uh, states and click there, so say this is the data for Assam. So, again another real time data and it is a district wise data which shows um, how much bulbs have been distributed in this particular area. So, this is a particular um, uh, graph which shows tube lights, number of tube lights in millions, so quantity in millions versus the year. So, starting from 2010 to 2016, tube lights, LED bulbs, CFL, CFLs and incandescent lamps. So, you can see that the LED bulbs from 2014 because of the Ujala scheme, there is a spike in the number of LED bulbs in the country. Whereas, in other bulb, other lighting fixtures, so say for example, this blue one is for the tube light, there is a minor decline. In case of the CFLs, there is a sharper decline. So, incandescent bulbs consume way much more larger amount of energy. CFL bulbs were much more environment friendly because they consume lesser energy as compared to incandescent lamps and now LED bulbs have come into the market which consume even lesser amount of energy. Uh, also because of this particular program, demand for LED bulbs has gone up by 50 times in the 3 years since 2014. The retail market price for bulbs sold under Ujala has dropped to a third. Why so? So, the fall in prices can be attributed to the economies of scale achieved due to substantial demand creation by the Ujala program in tandem with the global trend of reduction in prices of the LED chips. So, when demand goes up, usually the price of those products fall down because uh, of the scales, economies of scales. Also, India's LED bulb manufacturing capacity has also grown substantially with about 176 registered manufacturing units in India which are now producing LED bulbs. So, let us go back to 1st May 2010. So, this is an article from Times of India from 1st May 2010 which talks about CFL bulb scheme, scheme will be the world's biggest carbon credit project. So, at that point of time before this carbon credit project came into CFL bulbs were quite expensive. As a result, most people would not like to buy those bulbs, but this project came up in which so the project which will allow government investors, discoms and CFL manufacturers to sell CFLs at rupees 15 each instead of rupees 100. So, what this carbon credit project did? 
it paid for the rest of the 85 rupees. So, because if uh, lots of homes in India which is a developing country buys these CFL bulbs, they will be saving on the energy. As a result, there will be a uh, carbon uh, credit available because they are saving on that carbon dioxide emission. So, there can be other companies or other um, uh, organizations in developed countries who um, have to because for their operational purposes who are going to release damaging environmental effects, they can buy these credits from India. As a result, the CFL bulb prices can go down. So, the um, this offsetting will pay this 85 rupees. The result of which will be because now the CFL bulb costs only 15 rupees. So, more and more people will buy it and use it bringing in greater savings in the energy consumption. So, at that point of time this was 2010 a report from 2010 each certificate would sell each carbon credit certificate would sell at around 10 to 12 euros in the international spot market. So, that is where the concept of carbon trade exchange also comes it is kind of a trading situation which has been developed wherein people can trade their carbon credits. People can buy carbon credits and people can sell their carbon credits. So, let us understand what this clean development mechanism implies. So, the clean development mechanism or the CDM as it is called, it allows emission reduction projects in developing countries to earn certified emission reduction credits CER each equivalent to 1 ton of carbon dioxide. We will in this particular definition it is very important to see this aspect which says each equivalent to 1 ton of carbon dioxide. We will shortly come into discussing what it means. So, these CERs can be traded and sold and used by industrialized countries to meet a part of their emission reduction target under the Kyoto protocol. So, say for example, a country a developed country X has set for themselves that their equivalent uh, their carbon dioxide emission reduction has to be reduced by to a level of 200. So, but their production processes cannot stop. So, what they can do is they can fund certain activities in developing countries say um, setting up solar power stations or setting up wind power stations because the solar power station will generate electricity which will have some offsetting effect on the otherwise the CO2 which might have got emission because of a thermal power plant will help them in buying carbon credits. So, it is again like a concept in which we consider the whole globe as one entity. So, um, uh, entity X cannot reduce their um, uh, carbon footprint. What they will do is they will fund entity Y to set up a offsetting activity. So, the mechanism stimulates sustainable development and emission reduction while giving industrialized countries some flexibility in how they meet their emission reduction limitation targets. The CDM is the main scope of income for the UNFCC adaptation fund which was established to finance adaptation projects and programs in developing countries parties to the Kyoto protocol that are particularly vulnerable to the adverse effect of climate change. So, the adoption fund so, for each uh, CER credit they take 2 percent levy on CERs issued by the CDM. So, if you go on to this particular website UNFCC's website you can see a list of projects. So, you can see here it is showing 9577 notifications. So, you can see list of projects the um, uh, if you can see that 2 percent of CERs for adaptation fund this is the amount. So, you can know how much amount this whole project is worth of. Then the host party is the place where the CER project the developing country where the C, uh, uh, CER credit is being uh, won and these are the other parties who are going to fund those activities and they are all developed countries.
there is also an ISO standard for this particular activity like how do we do this carbon footprint uh, calculation for products. So, this is called as ISO TS 14067 and this the latest version is from 2013. So, that is why the year 2013. So, it is called as greenhouse gases carbon footprint of products requirements and guidelines for quantification and communication. So, it specifies principles, requirements and guidelines for the quantification and communication of the carbon footprint of a product. It is based on international standards on life cycle assessment. So, when we were discussing about the life cycle assessment, we shortly touched upon the fact that it is based on two ISO standards 14040 and 14044. So, it is this standard is based on that particular standard on environmental labels and declarations for communication. So, according to this particular standard, the carbon footprint of a product CFP is defined as sum of greenhouse gas emissions. So, when I say greenhouse gas emissions, there comes the concept of equivalence of carbon dioxide. So, there might be sulfur based sulfur oxides, there might be nitrogen oxides, there might be methane all those greenhouse gases they are converted into equivalents of carbon dioxide for the ease of making the standard. We had also discussed this while we were discussing the life cycle assessment of a product. So, carbon footprint of a product is sum of greenhouse gas emissions and removals in a product system expressed as carbon dioxide equivalents and based on a life cycle assessment using the simple uh, using the single impact category of climate change. So, when I am talking about greenhouse gas emissions is the mass of greenhouse gas released to the atmosphere. So, emissions is about what is released to the atmosphere removal is of a greenhouse gas removed from the atmosphere. So, there can be certain activities in due to which greenhouse gases will be removed from the atmosphere. So, say for example, if my uh, product uh, system involves uh, planting a tree, which is also going to absorb some amount of greenhouse gases. So, in my product system, I have certain ways in which I am also removing it. So, it is similar to uh, also like just uh, try to recall your life cycle assessment lectures, where we also spoke about how certain activities can get you credits for removing damaging effects from the environment. Say for example, certain recycling activities, if you use certain amount of recycled products and so on. So, both emissions and removals. Carbon dioxide equivalent. So, mass of a greenhouse gas is converted into carbon dioxide equivalents using global warming potential. So, say for example, one unit of carbon dioxide is the base unit. Uh, for example, methane is if you are talking about methane, then releasing 1 kg of methane into the atmosphere is about equivalent to releasing 25 kg of carbon dioxide. So, we multiply it by 25. In case of a nitrous oxide, 1 kg of nitrous oxide into the atmosphere is about equivalent to releasing 298 kg of carbon dioxide. So, I multiply it by 298 x. So, that is how my concept of carbon dioxide equivalent comes up in a life cycle assessment. So, it is compilation and evaluation of the inputs, outputs and potential environmental impacts of a product system throughout its life cycle like we had already covered. Then coming to offsetting. So, how are we defining offsetting as per the standard? So, mechanism for compensating for all or part of the CFP through the prevention of the release of reduction in or removal of an amount of greenhouse gas emissions in a process outside the boundary of the product system. So, it has to be outside the boundary of your own product system. Then I am calling it as a offsetting process. So, say for example, prevention of the release of 
So, if I know that my uh, production process or my product system releases so much amount of uh, carbon dioxide uh, equivalent or so much amount of greenhouse gas, then I might do certain activities say some adsorption technique, so that the release is prevented or say I can do certain amount of reduction into it or say some amount of removal. Say for example, investment outside the relevant product system say in renewable energy technologies. So, when I say that I am preventing the release of my uh, emission of greenhouse gases at the factory gate itself, what I am considering is I am still inside my product system. But the offsetting activity over here to be able to um, get carbon credits and so on, it has to happen outside the boundary of the product system. So, investment outside the relevant product system in renewable energy technologies. So, what this renewable energy technology will do is reduction in CO2 emission which might be caused due to thermal power plants or say energy efficiency measures outside my product system not inside my product system. So, if I do certain energy efficiency measures, then I will be able to mm, reduce or remove certain amount of emissions. Say for example, if I fund a project in which um, LED bulbs can be distributed. So, I pay for the LED bulb, LED bulbs can be distributed in many homes that is like energy efficiency in, in measure for lighting and I am helping to prevent emission of equivalent amount of greenhouse gas emissions or say some kind of afforestation activity where you are planting trees or some kind of reforestation activities and so on. So, one has to be careful of the fact that this particular mm, for the offsetting it has to happen outside the boundary of the product system. Of course, within the product system you will always try to reduce your carbon footprint, but for the concept of offsetting we are talking about outside the product boundary. Carbon storage. So, carbon storage in terms of carbon storage in a product it is like when carbon is removed from the atmosphere and stored as carbon in a product. In the same light we can also have terminologies like greenhouse gas source a source which produces greenhouse gases and greenhouse gas sink a place or a activity or a product which absorbs greenhouse gases. Say for example, a forest is a greenhouse gas sink, a factory is a greenhouse gas source. Next coming to the concept of carbon trade exchange CTX. So, CTX enables buyers and sellers to transact carbon credits electronically. So, first the carbon credits needs to be calculated, then it needs to be traded. Because we are using the terminology trade, so you can look upon carbon trade exchange like a stock exchange, where trading constantly keeps on happening and prices of the mm, mm, traded units. So, we will shortly see what are the traded traded units, the trade the prices of the traded units will keep on varying. So, it is the this carbon trade exchange is the first commercial partner to the United Nations CDM registry, which makes it possible to assess UNFCC's certified emission reductions for voluntary cancellation via the CTX global voluntary, voluntary carbon market exchange. It lists, lists carbon credits certified by the gold standard and United Nations CDM. So, two types of uh, carbon credits uh, are traded over here, one that is certified by the gold standard that is one of the standards, we will not go into the details of it, if you are more interested into it you can read about them or this United Nations CDM uh, project. So, the units in which trading happens are called as CERs. So, you already know what CER is, it is a certified emission reduction, VERs, VCUs, EUAs, uh, REDD and REDD plus. 
and some other units. So, so V R stand for verified emission reduction, they are also known as carbon credits or carbon offsets. EUA stands for European Union allowance unit, VCUs they stand for verified carbon units, red and red plus they stand for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation in developing countries. So, from these few examples of units you can see the width and the spectrum of mm, different units which are being traded at CTX. Then comes carbon neutral. So, what do we mean by carbon neutral? So, you might have heard that mm, certain companies claim that they are carbon neutral. What or say there are certain regions who will claim that we are carbon neutral. So, what does it mean? So, a company is carbon neutral when it measures its carbon footprint, reduces its emissions and buys carbon credits to balance out the difference. Every business has a carbon footprint made up of emissions associated with energy usage, transportation and waste. So, um, uh, you do not, not naturally become carbon neutral if you do not consciously try to um, uh, make your footprint 0. So, what you have to first do is measure it, then you reduce your own emissions and you do certain offsetting activities. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about design for sustainability, engineering design criteria and guidelines. So, these criteria and guidelines are helpful in case you do not have the time say for example, to go ahead with an entire product service system design, because a product service system design, a sustainable product service system design, it is a very good design approach but the amount of time required, the number of uh, experts required or number of uh, stakeholders involved is very large. So, there might be times where you are not able to go to that approach, but you still you can make a more um, environmental friendly uh, product by taking into consideration these engineering design criteria and guidelines. So, these criteria and guidelines they help you to also assess a certain product on the criteria and guidelines and also helps you in ideating onto features which will bring in better environmental friendliness in the different features. But this particular uh, method it is only targeted towards the environmental dimension of sustainability. Thank you.